In the world of tech, stability is key, but recently a storm has been brewing around Intel and their current generation CPUs. Users around the globe are reporting erratic behavior, games crashing, and even desktop lag. The situation has escalated to the point where Nvidia, another major player in the tech industry, has advised users experiencing these issues to consult with Intel. This has spurred Intel into action, launching an investigation into these widespread problems. While we all hope for a swift resolution, it's important to note that this issue didn't just crop up overnight. It's been simmering for a lot longer than most realize, and it's likely a complex mix of factors at play. But don't despair, there might be some potential remedies that users can try to mitigate these issues. In this video, we're going to delve deeper into this topic and explore these possible solutions. So let's get into it. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I wanted to revisit a topic that we discussed on the channel a few weeks ago pertaining to bizarre experiences users reported with their Intel CPUs. So I guess you can think of this video as a part two. I'll leave a link to it in the video description, but if you want a short recap, I talked about an issue that's been reported by other users online as well as other tech tubers I've been talking to who have been experiencing stuttering or lag on their desktop while using a 14th 13th or 12th gen CPU. Now, we still don't know the exact reason why users are encountering this problem, and the degree to which this issue is affecting users seems to vary with some saying they might occasionally encounter some hitching or stuttering, whereas some say it was very prevalent to the point it was obstructing their workflow and they ended up switching to a different platform altogether. In that video, I discussed how I experienced high DPC issues on both my 13900K and 14900K systems, which led to some rare audio dropouts or popping but I wasn't actually encountering the freezing issues some had reported. My issues were mostly resolved by unparking my CPU cores and utilizing a higher performance plan. I did suggest this to those who were also experiencing the desktop stuttering issues and some did give me feedback in the comments that it did solve their problems while unfortunately some said it didn't have any impact at all and their problems still persisted. Now Brian from Tech yes City who was one of the first to report on this problem said that while Speaking with insiders at a trade show in Taiwan last year, they believe this problem is due to a hardware change with these hybridized CPUs, where Intel has moved the input-output hub and detached it from the CPU, directly resulting in these high latency issues. If you're interested in learning more about those kinds of issues and that area of Intel stability fiasco, then I highly urge you all to check out that video. As for this video, I wanted to shift our focus onto the reports from users who have mentioned their systems are hard crashing, locking up, and free freezing while gaming. As I mentioned at the start of the video, this has been an ongoing issue for a while now. I've been seeing these threads on various forums like Reddit pop up since the release of Raptor Lake where people are getting crashes in games, especially CPU intensive games, and they're getting messages such as video out of memory during shader compilation. This issue was especially prevalent on games built on Unreal Engine 5. Hogwarts Legacy is a game that a number of people had reported on where they saw that error message or had crashed to desktop. And I too have seen this error message pop up on my test bench when testing out that game, but that was when I was testing out CPU stability and messing around with overclocking, but the fact that people are seeing this message or crashing when using quote unquote stock conditions is concerning. Along with that, affected users of this problem said that amongst their troubleshooting once they had manually downclocked their CPU P cores by lowering the multiplier to 54 or 52, their crashes and blue screen stopped. Keep that in mind because we're going to circle back to it. I'm sure you guys might have run into a game that does shader compilation at the start or when you're at the start menu, and this is a very CPU intensive task. It hits the CPU like a truck and will basically max out all the threads, which is why CPU instability will come to light and why people can't even get into their games. Call of Duty and Battlefield 2042 are first person shooters that do also do some shader compilation at the start, and they can be even more intensive than some actual CPU stress tests. Recently, WCCF Tech talked about how over in Korea, there were retailers reporting how customers were returning 13th and 14th gen CPUs 
And one of the main games they were talking about was Tekken 8, where users would experience crash to desktop and also be met with video out of memory errors. Retailers in Korea reported that they were seeing as many as 10 people per day returning PCs with these CPUs or returning the CPUs themselves if they had done their own custom build. The author of this article, Hassan, had also shared their own thread on Twitter, talking about the issues they had experienced with their 13900K, and eventually once they had undervolted their CPU, the issues were gone. I am wondering which method of undervolting they used, whether it was through an offset or through load line, but regardless, they're right in the sense that they shouldn't have to delve into this in order to fix their problems. Here's a Reddit thread from 11 months ago, where the user has a 13900K and their games were crashing. The way they had also worded their post implies that these problems weren't present at the start, but started to happen later. Once they had downclocked their CPU to 5200 MHz, their problems went away, but they eventually are made their CPU and the problem was no longer there. Here's another Reddit thread, this person was experiencing the same problem, and they had also downclocked their CPU in order to mitigate crashes, and then they got their CPU replaced by Intel, and then all of their problems went away. There was also a discussion on the hard forums, which is a very old PC tech forum, and the user had also shared similar issues, and this discussion had numerous other threads linked within it that also had users experiencing the same thing. What's also noteworthy is that if you sort the comments by new on some of these Reddit threads, you'll see that there are still users coming back to these threads and posting new comments talking about how they started to get the same problems, and then by downclocking the P-cores, their CPUs were fixed. What's also interesting is that a user on Twitter by the name of Sebastian Castellanos posted some negative reviews left by buyers on Newegg who had purchased 4900K or 4900 KF CPUs, and some of these reviews mention how the buyer had snappy and stable performance for about a month or so, and then all of a sudden, they would experience the stuttering and lag issues. Their games would start crashing, they would encounter a Windows blue screen of death. Erock on Tech, who was another one of the tech YouTubers I've been talking to about this problem, said that's how their situation started as well. Their system was working great at the start, and then after some weeks, it abruptly started to feel laggy and unstable. I find that to be quite intriguing, because if the system was working fine for the first few weeks, or first couple of months, and then they started to experience issues, this alludes to a theory that's been thrown around that these CPUs are probably degrading at a rapid pace that's not normal. Now, over time, all hardware and silicon will degrade, but we're talking about several years down the road, and at that stage, the user will have probably ended up upgrading to something else anyways. But the fact that people are talking about degradation in over a few months or even weeks, that's not normal. Apart from those users, there were also a number of people who talked about how their systems just didn't work right from the start, where they would experience crashes, blue screens, and freezing right from the start. This doesn't necessarily mean if it's because they could have a faulty CPU. If you guys have seen my DDR5 overclocking video, then you'll know about my frustrations I had with DDR5, and I think it might be playing a role in some people's systems, preventing stability. There are a lot of kits and motherboards out there that just can't handle DDR5 XMP well, and I'm not even talking about kits on the higher end of the spectrum. I've seen kits rated to run at 6600 or 6400 mega transfers, which is nothing for Intel, start to throw up errors when their XMP profiles were enabled. DDR5 has just been a mess since it's come out, and it's actually one of the reasons why I went with an Apex Encore for my personal rig, since it's a 2-DIM board, and that alone gives me far better stability than a 4-DIM board, as it's also my work PC and I just can't waste time messing around with RAM configurations. Nonetheless, if there's anyone who's watching this video, video and is experiencing issues, I definitely recommend doing multiple RAM stress tests such as test mem5, Karu, and then doing some field testing to ensure your XMP actually works because there is a really good chance it might not and you'll have to configure voltages yourself along with adjustments to timings. Now what about the people who said that their systems were still exhibiting issues from the start and it wasn't their RAM because they ended up downclocking their CPUs and that fixed all their problems? Well I'm thinking this could be due to two reasons. The first is that there are a number of defective chips out there that just can't handle the ambitious high clocks until have spec for these CPUs, and it could be due to a bad or relaxed binning process where there are chips that aren't actually stable at stock clocks but are still getting the okay and were sold as a 13700K or 14900K. You might be thinking why would such a large corporation do that? Well, I'm not saying it's definitely the case, but I'm also not dismissing the possibility of a poor QA process or an intentionally poor QA process. 
I don't want to sound like a tinfoil wearing nut job, but over these past few weeks, we learned about how Boeing, a multi-billion dollar giant in the aviation industry, was recently scrutinized for their horrible QA on 777 and 787 aircrafts. We saw multiple employees, engineers, and QA managers come forward with allegations that they were discouraged from flagging problems. Makes you think it's possible that Intel could have similar problems within its own company, where people would be aware of QA issues, but they gave the green light anyways to max maximize volume and margins. Now, why would they do this? Well, it could be simply due to marketing, you know, bigger number better, and to look good on benchmark scores. AMD also does the same thing as well, where their CPUs are basically configured to chase the highest frequency out of the box, and why people were freaking out about the 7000 series running at 95 degrees Celsius, TJ Maxx constantly under load. Don't get me wrong, in a, in a way it's good that the users are able to get the most out of their silicon out of the box, but if it means that the targets are just too ambitious, resulting in stability issues, then I think they should scale things back a bit. The other reason, and this is the one I'm leaning more towards being the case, is that people are out there running overclocks without actually realizing it. So when most people build PCs, the only thing that they'll do in the BIOS is set XMP or Expo, and then that's about it. But did you know that with these modern platforms and chipsets, motherboard manufacturers have been dialing in their own power profiles and then calling them default? They aren't actually running within the manufacturer's specifications, which essentially is overclocking. I know it sounds strange, but it's true. Your motherboard's default profile may not actually be adhering to Intel stock guidelines. Jay's Two Cents actually made a pretty good video outlining this problem. Asus is quite guilty of this on their own motherboards, where their optimized default profile was actually overclocking the CPU and removing wattage and current limits. This resulted in the CPU to run overvolted, thus causing high temperatures and potentially leading to instability. It's not until you enabled an option that specifically states enforce Intel limits where the motherboard ensures it's running with Intel's guidelines on wattage, headroom, and current. On many of the Reddit threads I talked about earlier, instead of downclocking their CPUs, another suggestion that people had brought up was to do exactly that. Check to see if Intel stock limits were enforced, and if you couldn't specifically find that option, then you'd have to manually set PL1 and PL2 limits, as well as the current limit. When you use the quote-unquote optimized defaults that motherboard manufacturers have configured, out of the box you'll see wattage limits set to like 4096 watts, and the current limit is at like 700 amps, which is just insane. It's far more than you actually need. I think this could be the reason why there are a lot of people online talking about how at the beginning, their CPU was working fine, and then after a few weeks or months, their CPU started exactly exhibiting weird behavior as if it was no longer stable. It could have been because their CPU was getting overvolted way more than it had to and eventually that did lead to degradation. There is a really good thread on Reddit that has the OP and various users talking about these settings which I'll link in the video description. I definitely urge you all to check it out because after configuring the stock Intel limits, many users did report their games no longer crashed. And these fixes that are discussed in this Reddit thread were also recommended by various game developers where instead of down clocking the CPUs, they told their users to ensure that they were enforcing Intel stock limits in the BIOS. Because by doing so, the CPU would automatically downclock as well, which is what helped fix the issues for most of these folks. And speaking of degradation and going back to DDR5, in my experience, I have seen XMP profiles, which just drastically raised the system agent far more than it has to, as well as other voltage limits like the VDD and VCCIO, and I think that might have actually degraded the CPU's memory controller, where it was actually no longer able to handle the stock XMP. Funnily enough, with all this talk lately surrounding Intel CPUs crashing and motherboard manufacturers being exposed for basically enforcing overclocking settings as stock, and many major tech outlets talking about this issue, Asus have recently released a BIOS update for their Z790 motherboard, which introduces an Intel baseline profile option. According to the description, it allows the user to revert to Intel factory default settings for basic functionality, lower power limits, and improve stability in certain games. Some users online were talking about the profile and they suggested to only use it as a last resort as the limits were even more passive than Intel stock limit guidelines, which severely limited performance. And you can see from the screenshot of the 4900KS, which basically got turned into a 4900. The numbers which were also posted from Falcon Northwest, who are a system 
integrator, talk about the proper Intel stock values. And these are the same ones that I have been using on my 4900K system, but I took it a step further and also applied an undervolt using specific load line values. And I've been doing this since I built the system. Here you guys can see I have Hogwarts Legacy running on my personal system, which has a 4900K, 48 gigabytes of DDR5 8000 memory, and an RTX 3090. Playing at 1440p here in Hogsmeade, which is a very demanding area of, this, of the game. And you can see my P cores are sitting comfy at 5.7 gigahertz, E cores are at 4.4, and the ring is at 4.5. I haven't had it crash, and it also completed the game's shader compilation at the beginning with absolutely no issues. Ever since I built my system, apart from the high DPC latency issues I was having that got resolved by unparking my cores, I haven't had a single problem with games crashing, my system freezing or lagging. It's been smooth sailing. And fingers crossed it stays this way as I've only had it for about 3 months. I have done some very extensive tr stress testing with my system as well to make sure that the CPU RAM was all good and stable. I also tried lengthy transcodes of AV1 using Handbrake, which also hits the CPU and memory pretty hard, and I haven't had any issues. I will probably make an update video down the road if I do encounter any sort of issues or weird stability issues or crashes, but so far it's been pretty good. So this whole situation surrounding Intel and their CPU stability problem has been pretty intriguing to say the least. While I do agree with the statement that out of the box, aside from enabling XMP, the system should work 100% stably. But unfortunately, I think people will need to come to the understanding that some user intervention is to be expected at this point, especially with these modern architectures that are just so much more advanced and complex with various components. CPUs are quite different to what your typical quad core from 10 years ago was, as you have P cores, E cores, power scaling and frequency boosting algorithms. There's just so much more convoluted. And DDR5 has also made things so much more complex from my experience. You'd think that the engineers would ensure the best possible configurations from the factory, but with everything I've seen with so many variables involved, it's just not the case anymore. This is clearly evident by the thousands of comments and threads created online of people troubleshooting their systems, whether it's due to power limits, RAM voltages, and or software settings. I look forward to seeing what Intel's investigation props up. If they do actually find some kind of hardware defect with the CPUs, like I said, I'm not dismissing the possibility, but for now, you'll have to be prepared to do some troubleshooting, or you might have to RMA the chip or switch to a different platform altogether, which I know sucks. In any case, I hope this video helped some of you out there who are facing issues in regards to your Intel CPU. Definitely leave your comments below and share what you have experienced or what worked for you. Alrighty guys, so that will do it for this one. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.